All right. So yeah, if you're ever wondering why I don't make more videos that often, well, that's that's kind of why. <laughs> I'm busy man. All right. Um, I don't think I need to do that. What I'm gonna do? These guys aren't pinned. Notice in the in the indicator over here, they're not actually pinned. What I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna give them a face command in this direction, and they should. This guy should move over to this side of the street, and then they'll be fully protected by the smoke screen. And then, hopefully, after about one minute, their suppression should drop, and uh, I can move them out and try to get them across to this building here. Otherwise, we're just going to have to go straight down the street, but that's, that's besides the point. And I'm going to change this order from quick to fast, because I don't want them to stop for anything. And I'm also thinking... I know it doesn't make a big difference exactly where you put the smoke, but I'd like it to kind of hit this side of the road if I could. Uh, do I have any more smoke? I don't, but what I do have is a bazooka team. And a bazooka team... See, this is what's confusing me, right? When I when I told that team to move fast right across the road into this action spot over here, um, that guy shouldn't have moved up there. Actually, I think I'm going to uh, I think I'm going to put that up on the forums as a as a bug report related to the corner peeking behavior because he shouldn't have uh, he shouldn't have done that. But this is one thing we're going to do. Um, I'm going to take the bazooka team and I'm going to put the bazooka team in the street and I know that's that's dangerous to do but we do have a smoke grenade out right now but what I want to do is have the bazooka team in position so that when the smoke finally blows away the bazooka team can fire a, a bazooka into this building and maybe make a dent in it because one thing I wanted to showcase was the ability of bazookas and things and uh, rifle grenades and bazookas to uh, to help eliminate units in buildings. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, this guy's moving up to throw a smoke grenade. This is the breach team. They don't have any smoke left, but they are able to move and they do have a submachine gun. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause these guys for 45 seconds. I'm going to move them quick to here, and I'm going to move them quick into this building. And we're going to give them a face command to look at that window right there. And that's what they're going to do. And then once the smoke builds up in front of this position, we can probably move further up the street and get into this building right here which I don't know how well they'll be able to see the front of that building, but it's got to be better than nothing. It's also kind of worth it to think, once you have a good, see, once you have a, a good smoke screen set up, you can actually start operating in the street. And it might be worth it to try to set up a medium machine gun team just right here in the road, set them up on their tripod facing that building so as soon as the smoke is cleared out, they can just start laying down fire into that building. Um, it'd be extremely dangerous, obviously, and uh, they do have rifle grenades, though. Yeah, actually, I mean, we're just doing, we're doing a demonstration here, so it doesn't matter that much if I take a few more casualties. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to deploy a weapon right there in the street. And let's get his ammo bearer team. I'm going to put them up here and have them face in uh, that direction. And we'll see how that goes. All right, we got a busy turn racked up here, so let's just see how it runs. We're going to skip over the Italian turn. I don't know where that ammo bearer team went. It looked like they ran, but I'm, I'll, I'll check it on their next on their next go. Here 
goes the mortar team. Oh, they just crossed the wrong side of the road. That's bad. And here's a downside to the 4.0 infantry behavior. The team leader is trying to move up the street, but because he's moving through a spot that's occupied by friendly troops, he decides to stop and look around. And he decided to move over here and do the corner peeking behavior. Uh, yeah, see, that shouldn't have happened. That should not have happened at all. I find myself very, very ambiguous about this 4.0 infantry behavior. Because uh, it does, it, it it seems to cause more problems than it solves. Really, I mean, I don't understand what the point was. Well, so much for that. Yeah, this whole thing is pretty much done here. I mean, the fact that he couldn't, the fact that he couldn't just run up the street, stop, and then throw a smoke grenade, uh, just, just ruined it. I mean, he can't, he can't run straight up a street, stop, and throw a smoke grenade. First of all, he got hung up on guys who were just sitting around here. He couldn't just step over them and keep moving. He had to stop, and because the new infantry behavior says you need to respect the space that other troops are in. Um, yeah, see, they're pinned down too. I might as well just give them a fast command into this building because they're not, they're not going to do anything. And they're not going to do anything either. And these guys are probably going to die before they get to their destination. I'm just going to change both of these orders to fast and maybe they'll make it Uh, well, we got about one minute left on that smoke grenade. I'm just going to move these guys straight across into this building here. And we'll see what happens there. They'll probably die before they get there. We got two casualties there. I'm still trying to get them to throw a smoke grenade into the middle of the street. And that's one thing I really want. I mean, look at that. What? What is he doing? I mean, before we had this corner peeking behavior, you know, they would just they would sit behind the wall, right in the middle. They wouldn't they wouldn't do that. This is just all right. This is becoming frustrating. Anyway, there's no casualties on the Italian side yet. Smoke grenade is at least shielding uh, the guys in the street, but it's run out, so whoever's still in that street is going to start getting shot. There's, you know, there's plenty of them. They are downstairs, open fire as well. Like that team had enough. These guys are pinned down. All right, so let's see what happened. This is already becoming a headache. No, okay. He hasn't thrown. He hasn't thrown it yet. Huh, man. Yeah, but that should not. 
that should not happen like that. It really shouldn't. Anyway, we got two guys here with Thompsons. They're rapidly running out of ammunition. They did manage to uh, to make this team flee. I'm gonna I'm gonna re rewind the turn. All right. Now that I I just I wanted to make sure that 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 they didn't throw the smoke grenade out like in the middle of nowhere there. So anyway, this uh, that two-man team is going downstairs. They run right out through the smoke. Oh, they went in this door. Eh, I don't think it would have mattered much. And then see, because I gave him a face command looking at that window... Eh, well, at least one guy's looking over there. He's gonna look through his binoculars. spotting cycle to finish and then he sees him. He's getting ready to throw that smoke grenade. Well, that's not good. Maybe I can, uh... I'm gonna... Hold on. Clear target. I'm gonna try to get him upstairs first before he does it. And then he's gonna face the street. Oh, no, it already happened. See, the pop smoke button has grayed out, which basically means he's going to uh, he's going to throw that smoke grenade, whether I want want him to or not, and it's just going to hit this building and sit inside this building. So yeah, this is pretty much the worst possible uh, the worst possible condition. I'm going to give these guys another face command to look at that building. Now I do have a bazooka back here. What do you mean no line of sight? Oh, that's because the smoke is still there. I'm going to give them another face command just to make sure they're looking that way. Does anybody have a smoke grenade left? No. See, I actually practiced this the uh, I actually practiced this yesterday, and it went so much better than it did before. Uh, you know, I guess that's that's a testament to the game. I guess that no two actions, despite the fact that you literally try to do the exact same thing over and over again, uh, they never do work out exactly the same. Anyway, can he even area target? Yes, he can. So, that means he can at least see it. Uh, those two guys are dead. He's wounded. I'm wondering if I could at least try to get the bazooka into the street and then just fire the bazooka at the building. You know, I've already... Eh, yeah, I've already taken casualties anyway. Let's just do a fast move right out in its... Oh, he has no line of sight still. All right, I'll have to wait for the smoke to clear, and then I can try it. <laughs> it's a bit of a cowboy maneuver, but I mean, this this little training exercise here is already screwed up anyhow. Uh, so yeah, we're going to give this one more turn. I'm going to try to get this uh, mortar team with their Thompson, their pistol, and their Springfield upstairs. Jesus, a lot of noise now. Sorry about that. Uh, still got the BAR guy doing some good work down there. Oh, we do have a contact marker on those guys running away, but that's all right. Hmm. I suppose the next logical step is to try to leapfrog the teams forward in these buildings. 
because it seems that these guys can see the heavy machine gun team, which is good, but they're also out of hand grenade range, which is bad. But if I can at least suppress them, or even kill the guy on the machine gun... But I have no more smoke grenades, which means my ability to move con under concealment is basically gone. I mean, I could try setting up a mortar, like, back here. Like an 81mm mortar. <laughs> and try to try to throw a white phosphorus round right in front of this building. But, I mean, that's that would be rather excessive. Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to give it one more minute. picked up the gun. He picked up the gun and he ran away with it. That's pretty funny. And it looks like that smoke grenade landed in a beautiful spot. Let's just hit go on that. All right, let's so let's take a look at this. Cuz one thing that is for sure, we are aware that these guys ran away. There is, you know, there is slight contact with them. Probably oh because of these guys. I didn't I was I didn't really want that. We're just we're calling this out of bounds for the uh, for the scenario. But, I mean, if he wants to waste a couple of bullets shooting at them. He th wow! He threw that thing dead center in the street. I gotta admit, that's impressive. And of course, according to our perspective, you can see the, uh, the icon representing the troops move away and you can see the uh, the contact markers here in the road showing the team has evacuated its position so even though we haven't caused any casualties to the enemy force and honestly the only casualties we've taken were mostly because of stupidity um, one nice thing is we now know that both teams have evacuated their position I will be trying to move them back oh, never mind that's the uh, that's my pre-positioned sniper team over here to, to punish those who are cowards. But the point is, is that what we were able to do is successfully move up the street into a position which can see and lay down fire on the enemy positions at the end of the street and force the enemy out of their position. And as I said, just with the use of smoke grenades, just creating a moving smoke screen in front of my guys, I was able to get down here and effective removal of the enemy from their positions uh, without too much trouble. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, those two guys died, but that's mostly because the guy wouldn't... I, I forgot to give him a smoke grenade throwing order. And this guy died simply because he decided to walk out of his action spot and move up to the corner and try to peek around it. Which, you know, I'm, I'm not going to count that as something I did. Because uh, I'm pretty sure I had nothing to do with that. But now the point is, uh, at this point, if you're in an actual street fight, you also have to consider that the enemy might be occupying positions that you can't see yet. Like, say, this house around the corner, or, you know, something like that, or maybe this house on the corner, or anything like that. Although I'm pretty sure you would have, there would have been some indication before now. But one thing you can do, once you've moved the enemy from their position... ...is leapfrog you guys forward.
Maybe we can use that corner peeking maneuver over here. Try to get them into the street and uh, medic up these casualties. 